So this is the Dell XPS 16 that came out this year. I had the privilege to try it out and if you've been eyeing this laptop or the whole XPS lineup, you've probably watched a ton of videos about it. Now, I mainly do video and photo editing and casual gaming on the side, so I would like to show you my experience owning it for three months. I'll be including some benchmarks and applications I use on a daily basis to show some performance and see if it's worth your money. So the XPS lineup has been Dell's most popular lineup. I would say Dell has been very consistent with their product positioning. So let's start off with the general specifications. It's running an Intel Core Ultra 7 155H with 16 cores and 22 threads up to 4.8 gigahertz with NVIDIA RTX 4070 at 60 watt power, 32 gigs of RAM at 7,467 mega transfer per second, one terabyte M.2 storage, Wi-Fi 7, Bluetooth 5.4, and Copilot AI on Windows 11. All right, so why would you get a Dell XPS in the first place? If I'm guessing you're the type of person that likes sleek and minimal aesthetics, you're probably looking for a laptop that is primarily for productivity, such as video and photo editing. But at the same time, you're probably a casual gamer. But keep in mind, you're not gonna get the full performance because it's not meant to be a gaming laptop, especially if you're running those AAA games. With that in mind, the XPS is available in two colors. One is platinum and second is the graphite for a darker tone. I really wish I had the graphite because I do love the minimal and sleek aesthetics of it on a darker tone. But generally speaking, the laptop looks very professional. It doesn't have too many stickers and we only get the Dell logo on the top and the XPS on the bottom. The body is made of aluminum and glass that definitely affects the weight of this thing, which is 4.8 pounds. And you can expect that this laptop is built like a tank. You don't need two hands to open the laptop, which is a plus. And I would recommend putting a skin on it to protect it from scratches. So one thing that this laptop shines on is the display. It's beautiful, it's sharp, the colors are accurate and vibrant. And the one I got here is 4K OLED touchscreen display, which I think is a perfect resolution. And I think it's one of the things I really enjoy with this laptop. The bezels are really thin, which the XPS lineup are known for. They managed to make it really thin while putting the camera placement on top of the screen. The only drawback with this display is the refresh rate. It's currently running at a maximum of 90 Hertz refresh rate, which is a bummer because I really wish it was at least 120 Hertz refresh rate. For the front camera, it's a 1080p at 30 FPS, which was better than the previous gen. And just overall working with this display, I think it's been amazing. So for the display and webcam, I'll give it a 10 out of 10 rating. In terms of upgradability, unfortunately, the RAM and the Wi-Fi are soldered and you can only swap the M.2 SSD and the battery later on. I think it would have been nice if you can upgrade your RAM and Wi-Fi for a newer and faster version because when editing 4K footages, I would highly recommend at the very least to have a 30 gigs of RAM memory so you have enough to process those 4K footages, but at the same time, you can run programs like Photoshop, Lightroom, Chrome in the background. It would also have been nice to have an extra M.2 expansion slot for your storage because we all know that videos and photos take so much space nowadays. So in terms of upgradability, I'll give it a solid six out of 10 just because I think these are really important in terms of productivity and more specifically video and photo editing. For the keyboard aesthetic wise, it looks really good. It's beautiful and clean. Typing experience may be subjective. It does feels good when typing, but sometimes I do accidentally press other keys because of its almost zero lattice keyboard layout. So for the keyboard, I'll give it an 8 out of 10 rating just because it's clean and minimal. It looks very good. It might just take a little time to get used to the layout. Let's move on to the top navigation. I mean, believe it or not, it looks really good and it makes it easier to adjust volume, brightness and other functions of the laptop. I do love the seamless design, but I really wish they had put an extra layer for F keys because as an editor, I use F keys for shortcuts almost all the time. The only way around it is to hold FN and press escape to lock it in a certain settings. But overall, I really do love the seamless design. So in terms of rating, I'll give it a solid eight out of 10. Now for the touchpad, there's not much to say, but it's great. I really like the seamless approach they did and it's huge. I believe it starts around here 
to here. The tracking is fast and accurate and the feedback when pressing it feels amazing. It's made of glass so it doesn't feel cheap and plasticky. So overall, I think it's a really good touchpad. You can definitely feel the quality and in terms of rating, I'll definitely give it a solid 9 out of 10. So for the speaker, it's good. It sounds stereo and it gets pretty loud but I do think it needs more bass. As I was testing the speaker, I noticed that on the right side, I get a tiny bit of sound distortion when it gets loud. And I'm not sure if it's just my piece, but here's a quick preview. So do let me know if you noticed it or if it's just me. When I turn it up from 80 to 100% volume, it does feel flat and I get this vibration feedback, which is a little unpleasant. So in my real world usage, I usually don't turn it up 90% of the time. So with that, I'll give it a seven out of 10 rating. Now, as you can see, there are a few type C ports, which are two Thunderbolt Gen 2 type C. And on the other side, it's just a regular 3.2 Gen 2 type C, a headphone jack and a micro SD card reader. I really wish they went with a full SD card reader because as a content creator when doing videos and photos most of my memory cards are full size so i don't know why dell went with a micro sd i think it's a missed opportunity but one thing i like are these type c ports because you can charge the laptop on either side dell also provided an expansion port for hdmi and usb which is nice but since the wi-fi is soldered i really wish they included an ethernet port on this accessory so here's a quick Wi-Fi speed test. Keep in mind that my internet can go up to one gigabits per second, so that's the maximum. So for the ports and accessibility, I'll give it a seven out of 10. There's a lot more on paper to mention, but I do really want to show you guys how it performs. So here are the benchmarks. Based on my testing, one thing that I noticed is that the power brick can get really hot to the touch. And based on performance, I'll give it a rating of seven out of 10. For the battery life, I don't want to test it idle. So all I did was charge it full and do what I normally do on a daily basis because I think that is more important. So the settings are 80% brightness at 90 Hertz refresh rate, volume level at 50% and the laptop is running one app at a time. So I did some video and photo editing, watched some videos, browsed and some gaming and the battery lasted for two and a half hours of actively using it. With that, I'll give the battery a six out of 10 rating because I wish that it lasted longer. Now for the price. I double checked it on their US and Canada website. It's currently 3,259 USD and 4,359 Canadian with the specification in mind. I know Dell is currently positioning their XPS lineup to be high-end professional laptops competing with Apple MacBooks and their Alienware is targeted towards gaming niche. So for the price, I'll give it a solid six out of 10 because as I was doing my research, there's a lot of really good laptops at that price point with tremendous performance difference. Like the Apple MacBook Pro M3 Max, which is probably 15% better overall, but it's just a little bit more expensive. Or the Asus Rogue Zephyrus G16, the Lenovo Legion laptops, and so forth. But I think if you have the budget and if you're looking for a laptop that is robust, sleek, minimal design that can do some video editing, photo editing, and some level of gaming, I think the Dell XPS 16 is a decent choice. So here are the overall scores. Display is 10 out of 10, upgradability is six out of 10, keyboard, eight out of 10, top navigation, eight out of 10, touchpad, nine out of 10, speakers, seven out of 10, ports, seven out of 10, benchmarks, seven out of 10, battery life, six out of 10, price, five out of 10 with a total of 73 out of 100. So when considering the XPS lineup, the value that Dell has put is just not about performance, but I also think it's about the design and build quality. The Dell XPS does fall short in some performance and in a user perspective, I think it's just between if you're a PC 
or a Mac user that has the budget because you're definitely paying for the design, build quality, and aesthetics. I would say if this laptop goes on sale during holidays, which is coming soon, it will be worth getting. It has a solid performance and it looks super clean. The speakers are good and the display is amazing. So that's Dell XPS 16 for you. Do let me know if I forgot something. I'll try to answer it as much as I can in the comment section below. Please subscribe to my channel because there's a large portion of you that are not. Like and comment with what you think. Follow me in my social medias. And as always, have a great day. Stay faithful. And here are some of my videos if you want to check my channel. Peace out.